of Good Talk. Hello, everyone, and welcome to a special Saturday edition of the MYBC Virtual Bookstore Series. You know, I started these um, back in December when I was looking around my house going, wow, I love books. I love books that I know the authors connected to the book because it seems like I'm the steward of their creativity. We all have gifts in, um, in this world, whether you paint, whether you cook, whether you go on a nature walk and take amazing pictures like my friend, Laura Riddock. Um, we all have gifts in this world. And when we keep that gift to ourselves, when we choose to invest in buying that art or tasting that great food, and we don't tell other people, it doesn't do the world any good. So I'm super duper excited because this, these two lovely ladies, one has connected me in a weird and wonderful way that we discovered last January when we shared a stage together on Voice Story, um, each telling our um, independent story. And then she uh, introduced me to her incredible daughter, uh, Jenny Story. So welcome ladies to the Virtual Bookstore Author Series. Thank, yeah, you thank you for, for having, having us. us. Yes, we really appreciate it, Jeanette. Yeah, we did meet in a weird way, yeah. but was the best thing. <laughs> Absolutely. So um, let's see. So Jenny, let's say a little bit, because in my pre um, amble, I guess that's called, or pre-posting about you, and I looked up on, um, on Google, it says you're a 2D and a 3D illustrator and also an artist. So what does that look like and how did the, okay, let's start there and then we'll start into a, a bit of your story. Yeah, so um, when I turned 17, I got accepted into Vancouver Film School for 2D and 3D animation. And what those are is like, you know, the movies like Moana, Lion King and all that. People, there's people who had to work on those things. And yeah, that's kind of what I do. I do animation, so. Yeah. Oh, I, I have a, um, going to have an announcement soon that I'm going to be turned into a cartoon in virtual reality. So uh, I'm going to have my own comic book where I'm a social media superhero, where I oh. go in virtual reality and I tell people, um, I have these two cute little bots with me, Professor Manners and Miss P's and Q's, oh. that as the kids are learning about, um, you know, their subjects, if they're not being kind, my little bots are watching over them and report back to me. And I go and I tell them how to be kind and how to appreciate and um, in virtual reality. So, oh my gosh, is that ever cool, Jeanette? That yeah. is so yeah. cool. Yeah, no, there's a, a yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll, I'll hook you up with uh, my lady Janelle Gardner. I was approached by Lachelle Elkins. You often hear that name a lot. Um, she's America's super mom and she loves books and makes sure that I get connected to great authors. So Aww. that's the full circle. And since, you know, COVID hit, I've had some amazing people come into my life um, regarding books as well as opportunities. Um, and for me to showcase my greatness, like I'm showcasing your greatness. So Jenny, you have two books. What are the titles of your books, please? Yeah, uh, so- She has them here, she'll yeah. show them. So, oh, perfect. The first book, which is a fantasy sci-fi trilogy is called Dysnomia, Outcast on a Distant Moon. And then the second book is the sequel to it, uh, which is Dysnomia, Home Lies in Your Heart. And as you can see, it's wow. bigger. <laughs> One fellow said to us, yeah. okay, move over, War and Peace. Here comes Dysnopia. <laughs> wow. So what was the, um, let's start with the subject line, or where did the subject line come from, or plot line, I guess, is the proper word with a or a fiction book, and the, the methodology for you to write the first one, and then, oh my gosh, what a, what a landmark novel in the second one <laughs> yeah uh so i guess uh what started it was kind of based off this weird dream i had in high school i was studying for my uh, socials grade nine and just to keep me up i started to turn on my tv and while i'm studying um uh, there's these weird scenes that ha that come on the tv that are in the book and when my mom calls me for dinner i look back and it was off and it was off the whole time and yeah, the uh, idea just never went away from my head. So I decided to write a book about it. And that's how it began. Yeah. So how long did the first book take you to write? Uh, about two to three years, because I actually wrote this way back when I was in high school in my creative writing class. 
Yeah. Ah, okay. So, uh, and then book number two, which I know is what is it? Two months old in release or three months old now? Uh, it came out um, May first. May first. So, yeah. So, so we're coming month. up to the third full month that it's been um, out, and I've been seeing you yeah. everywhere at chapters, doing book signings. It's so exciting that we're able yeah. to you're able to do that. So what led from, let's say, 25% of a, a book to 100% of a chunk of a book? That's amazing. And how long did book two take you to write? Uh, book two definitely took longer, about maybe three or four years since it was longer. Um, I don't I just say, God, as you, the more writing you do and lessons, the more you learn and get gain experience, just start to write more and yeah, yeah that's uh, that's all i can say and yeah i just i just i i didn't even realize as i wrote how much it was gonna be so it was a shock to me too yeah when she so. showed me went that's a big book, <laughs> that's a big book. <laughs> so did you work with an editor because the first thing that comes to my mind if i want to write a non-fiction book well i know we work with editors in both fiction and um i know janet your book is non-fiction uh, that working with an editor did they want to go, okay, Jenny, let's chunk this book down just a little bit, just a little bit, just a little bit. So what did an editor have to say with putting out such a big book on the second time around? Uh, well, it, it was, it, but the second book has been a little bit interesting because with the first book, we went with well, kind of a hybrid way. So okay. we had the editor, the proofreading, and yes, they did everything that you said. They made recommendations on you shouldn't have this or this, and then making sure that they're all the spelling and grammar is good in that. Um, but the second one, we kind of went more, um, self-published over okay. it. I still had like uh, my mom was my editor for the book actually, so she and she supports like if you want to make this big book, go for it. And so yeah, it's basically I had more control this time with the second. And one. actually, the fellow who worked with us on this, um, Influence Publishing, is who we went with before on the first book. But then what they decided to do is they decided to let authors be able to get a little bit of money for yeah. their books because what was wow. happening is the distributor was taking money for print. Um, then they had to take something and then it, it just, and then the percentage comes off if it's through Amazon or whatever. So it ended up where the poor Arthur was, author was hardly getting anything. So what they did is they disbanded Influence Publishing, but they're still kind of there, but it's only if you feel you need help, then you yeah. have to pay a fee to, to get things done. But what Greg did, he helped us because him and um, Judy, they'd split like through influence. And then so Greg helped us. So he read book through and, and, and things like that too. And then I, I did as well. And it's the 800 pages because it's got to have everything. There is so many adventures, so many twists and turns, so much going on. But it, I, me, I, I love to write books. Uh, I love to read books, but, but in the last few years, I haven't been able to read books like I used to, but I couldn't, not just because of me, but other people that are reading it now, you just can't put it down because you just got to know what's happening next. And before you knew it, I was already in, I don't know how many pages in, and I kept going to your room going, what? And then I go, no, like you go through all these emotions. So big book, but I got to tell you, it keeps you intrigued. It keeps you on a roller coaster, and yeah, so it's it's uh, it's a big book, but yeah. it was needed to get this certain segment of Dysnomy and the characters out. Oh, that's so cool! So, what is in classification? Is it um, YA or youth uh, youth author? Is it an adult book? Is it a, so? Who's your audience that needs to put this this book in their hand um, and enjoy it? Um, I guess the target targeting wise, it is kind of young adult YA. However, okay. it's almost like Harry Potter where that's also mm. targeted for young adults, but I've had people from ages six to 60 read it and enjoy them themselves. Because technically the book is for everyone, but mar marketing target what is young, YA, so. Yeah, okay. it, it's, she's been referenced. Um, a lot of people have bought her books or sees a book sign just be and have read the book. They they've said that she's they reference her to um, J.K. Rowling in that type oh, okay. of writing where it's the type where it is for young adult. But I mean, we have everybody, male, female, mm -hmm. eight. 88. Like we have just people from all different age groups, both male and female, all wanting are, are, are reading it. So it is young adult, but that's what we're 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 getting. Um, 
is, okay. is that age group. Yeah. So before I start talking to you, Janet, about your book and um, your career as an author, Jenny, I love having the author read the back of both of the books. So if you can read the back of both the books so we can understand um, what the two books are about, please. Okay, so Jeanette is good. Yeah, yeah, she is. <laughs> so yeah, so I'll start with the first one here for the trilogy, Dysnomia Outcast on a Distant Moon. And here we go. So a young woman named Layla sets out to prove herself. Strong-willed and courageous, she is determined to show that she can do anything a boy can do. Along her journey, mm. she finds herself face to face with danger, adventure, and mysterious forces. A devious character named Nylern traps Layla and her friends, and they are driven off the edge of a cliff into a mysterious new world underground. They realize that they must do all they can to find the courage to comfort danger if they are going to find their way back home. So, yeah. Wow, that I have tingles just to let you know because that mirrors so much in life what we should be doing collaboration, paying attention, uh, falling off a cliff doesn't mean, well, sometimes it means the end of our life, but falling <laughs> off a cliff into a new opportunity, let's use that metaphor to come together, to be aware, female empowerment. Uh, there's just, there's so many amazing nuggets. I was just yeah. talking to a colleague, uh, Pamela Bragg yesterday, and um, she works with a lot of women entrepreneurs. And I almost, I, I think I want to get this book for, because I kid you not, we almost said that exact topic on what your book is about yesterday oh, in our meeting, wow, wow. about female empowerment, people coming together, people standing up, uh, facing things that they don't know how to face. And do we have tools out there to be able to do these things? So this is, uh, this is fascinating. And it's I funny you should say yes. that because um, a friend of ours who lives in Australia, the first thing she did when she read the book, she said, said to us, you know what? Was Jenny thinking of herself as Layla because of everything she went through in her life with autism and following her dreams and pushing through barriers and that and the power of Layla saying, yeah, I can be in the army. I can be a commander. Yeah, I can get in out or in and out of this situation. And I don't know if Jenny even thought about that at the time. She just really liked this character, yeah. Layla, and, and this 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 story. So, well, yeah, yeah. So the story continues in a book to... Oh, sorry, that was, we're not done here. That was my dryer. Where I, yeah. No. Uh, no. The dryer. Okay, get off, Jenny. No, no, no. no. Uh, and then, yeah. And book and two. Here, here is the continuation. The second book, They Snow Me, Home Lies in Your Heart. So... After being together for a long time, Layla Jenkins and Shane Dawson decide to take their relationship to the next level until he has been kidnapped. Now it is up to Layla to go and rescue him along with the help of her friends. But as the ex royal commander goes to search for the Dark Prince, it brings her back to an old familiar place, which makes her question the decisions that she's made. Ooh. Perfect, yeah. succinct, and oh my gosh, um, love it, <laughs> love it, love it. Um, I don't know about you, but in my head, this needs to be either made into some sort of series or movie or something like that. So anybody watching, I have about 1,700 plus followers, anybody that's connected in that kind of industry, which great segue to go over to Miss <laughs> Miss Janet right and now. And you know, it, it, it's funny because <laughs> she's writing the script to the first book right oh, now. Yeah. She's just about done and we are venturing out because she wants to make this into trilogy movies oh, um animated so, movies. And, but she wants them animated too i was saying animated human one but she goes no i want animated so we are trying to you'll know, get over to la and but also in canada here because you kind of want to i we kind of like to go through canada yeah, you know absolutely. um but we're that's that that is the goal Jeanette so you and as a matter of fact just Ooh. someone had written this on one of the references she says um I hope stories books get turned into a feature film one day so um yeah so that's that's what our big hope and she you has been likened like I say to JK Rowling and also as the new power voice in young adult fantasy fiction so we're hoping that will you know push these movies forward I, I can see it Jenny I appreciate um the animated Part because you know as adults when we sit down and we're like oh we're just watching a cartoon we're not like we're just having some fun we're just watching a cartoon where sometimes when we get it and watching like a um it sounds like a very intense intensive movie 
you almost feel like you got to be really, really invested where at least a cartoon, it's like, oh, Oh, I'm just sitting down watching a cartoon with my kids. It's for my kids. But of course, there's always adult themes um, in all Disney movies that you look over at your, your child after you're watching it, or my, in my case, my grandkids, and you go, did they get that reference over there? And of course, they didn't. And that was meant for us adults. Yeah, uh, and it's funny you should say that, because um, when her first book came out, we did send the book, the first book, we did send it to Disney. And that's when John Laster was still there. And he actually gave us a letter back and said that he really loved the book and that it should be made into, into movies. And if it was a trilogy, a trilogy. The thing with Disney is they have their in their own house people. So mm. it couldn't be done per se through them. But we're we're gonna we're gonna do it. I just, you know, it's like everything else, full. Full speed Full ahead. ahead. <laughs> so Janet, let's get into you. you write it. You're an author. You're a well-known um, actress locally and internationally. Um, you're very busy and, and I know incredibly grateful for the business that you've been getting and jobs you've been getting in this last um, little bit as the, the movie industry um, um, heightens up. By the way, I live near 264th and 8th and there's the soundstage that's always busy there. So I, uh, oh. I can kind of tell the the um the temperature of the or I guess that's the right word of the industry whether that's parking lots full and they're using the back lot <laughs> there or it's empty and it's been full for about the last six months which is I'm yeah uh, uh, we thought with COVID I mean that March to June we thought uh oh um is it ever going to come back but I I will say COVID has not been nice and and I my heart goes out to people who've passed away and people are sick with it. I tell you, the move industry here since June of last year has been nuts. I mean, when it came back, I did a uh, movie of the week. I did a Sound of Both movie. I did Virgin River. I was, it was just boom, 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 boom. And I went, what is going on here? And we've been, uh, uh, Canadian actors have been auditioning so much because a lot of the Americans and people from Europe and people right. from other countries couldn't come across the border then. It's now everything's starting to change. But we were given the opportunity to audition for bigger roles um mm -hmm. compared to the ones that you know we oh, were right we're booking so it was a whole whole different um whole different genre for us for us lately yeah and i know our, our connection in a kind of six degrees but it's more like one degree is my brother gary harvey is a director um producer right now he's in newfoundland with cbc um directing a, a, another series Yes, um, I've been following him. Well, I know I, his, his, well his, not to say friends, but I know Gary. Um, yeah. I did a class, a workshop thing with him, and and I know him. We're you know Instagram friends, and that he's your brother is a talented man. But not only that, he is such a joy to work with. Well, he is and I know a lovely personality. Last year, the first part of the year, he got buckled under with a bunch of people to help write the. Um, I was going to say curriculum, but that's not the right. The policies, procedures to get you guys back onto stage um, in order for, you know, the safety protocols, how you guys were going to behave, what craft services was going to look like, because he wanted to get back to work as well. Yes. And I remember him sending me a picture from his directing Murdoch Mysteries last summer. Oh, and, yes, he did. Yes, yes. He, his face mask, he looked like he was a firefighter, the type of face mask and breathing <laughs> equipment that he was using on set. Oh, my like, dude. And I will, just, I will, I will let you know. Thank you to your brother and all these people because I, I told my agent the first film I did, I said, if this safety protocol is not there, I don't care what size of role it is, I'm off. I says, because I'm not going to make myself sick. For role. I says, I'm just not going to do it. But the safety protocol has been bar none. Like I can't even say it's, I, I felt the safest when I was on a wow. set. It was just unreal. And I know that Sandra Bullock, um, as well as an untitled movie right now, we, the courses, you had to take courses. And if you didn't pass oh these God. courses, I felt like I could be a health professional. <laughs> yeah, we had to take courses and it was long ones. And it was, I'm just going, oh, okay. So you really had to study. So that's how serious they were and that's how they were being there for everybody not just a, it was actors crew it, every single person that's on yeah. board and it was quite quite the difference as a matter of fact the first film i did they my trailer they sanitized it so bad i went to go to the washroom oh, and i slipped off the toilet because the sanitized. i didn't realize there's so much sanitization on it but let's put it this way 
um, thank you to Gary and everybody who was involved in that because um, they've done they have done a super fantastic job. Um, okay, so let's get to your book. What, how are you an author and in this world of books and um, sharing your creativity and your gift to this world? Well, you know what, Jeanette, it's very funny how this came about because I never thought I'd write a book. And it's when we moved here to Vancouver and Jenny was, you know, going to Vancouver Film School. And so we sold her home and moved here. And her teacher had said, you know, Jenny's got to get this story that's written. She's got to get this made to a, 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 a book. And so I had an actor friend that I met here in Vancouver who told me about this event that was going on, which was Influence Publishing, um, looking for authors. So we went and I was talking to them about Jenny's book, but at that time they were not doing fiction. Okay. So they said, but give us a call or we'll give you a call in a year because we want to get into fiction. But she says, we're doing nonfiction. And so for some reason, I just was talking, getting to know Julie and I told her about Jenny's um, life journey, our journey with, with autism. And she just looked at me and she goes, oh. And I, she, I said, watch, she goes, we have so many people that tell us they're going to write a book about autism mm. and their childhood, but they never do. And for some reason, I looked at Jenny, I looked at her, and I go, maybe I'd like to write a book. And then I thought, what have I done? I said, maybe I'd like to write a book about Jenny's journey with autism. And the next thing you know, the following year, they got a hold of us both, asked us if we come to this workshop, which we did. Uh, and lo and behold, there you go. That's where it started. And I thought, what have I, you know, you're kind of thinking, what have I done? So there you go. And in the midst of writing this book, um, which is called The Autistic Author and Animator, um, I got breast cancer. I was diagnosed with breast mm. cancer. So there was a timeline that we had to, because we wanted to publish our books to come out at the same time. But I got her done by the end of the year, beginning of the year, and then we put them both out in May. Yeah, so for me, this was my first time ever writing a book. Never, ever thought I would write a book. So now it's giving me our insight on other books I'd like to write, just haven't had the time lately to, to, to do it. Because not only am I an actor, but I'm talent scouting. I coach actors. So there, I got any, a lot of avenues I'm doing that. But I would like to write a couple more. Yeah. Well, I, I love the approach to me, it's, it's much like in a business, when you have peer-to-peer -peer counseling, when you don't have to go to your manager or the president for a question, that when you can have managers that get along or peers or the sales team get along and they're able to help each other out with the, the silly questions that if they were to go ask the boss, they would feel like, oh, I might get fired if I ask this question. So having a peer-to-peer, -peer, like you mom to mom, daughter to daughter, that's mm -hmm. um, you know a person um, living with autism and reading the words versus finding that medical book or going on to WebMD and, and digging into what it means to be autistic and not, because to me, like, I'd rather learn from the person walking the story oh. than the person who has investigated the story. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you know what, you've yeah. just hit, you've, you have just Jeanette, and this is an old saying, hit the nail on the head. Because when we have our book signings or when we have our speaking engagements, uh, we have met so many families who we've now were per contact with each other now and so many had said when they read my book this is the avenue that the people in the autistic community have said you gave us hope mm, you gave us a beautiful. rainbow you gave us a light at the end of the tunnel because they thought their lives are over they were told by doctors basically what i was told to put your child in 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 a corner um, and that's one thing uh, people said, it's like sitting with you across from a coffee table and just talking with you and, and your life, you know, your life journey. Um, and then I, like I wrote it not only for the autistic community to help families and autistic individuals, but I also wrote it for the general public mm -hmm. because I wanted to shed the stigma box that still Jeanette surrounds autism. Yeah. And I wanted to shine a positive light so people could see that autistics are a beautiful 
beings in both not only our social society, but also in our workforce. A lot of autistic people are still not being hired in the workforce. There are places now that are, which I just love to hear. There's a place in Germany that's all they'll hire is autistic people oh, because yeah. they are so hardworking and they just, the routine they get, they know what they're supposed to do. Um, so, and I know there's different levels of autism, but let's let every individual reach the peak that they can. And please, please, please be there, not only for the parents, but I write in my book about my son too, because the siblings are kind of forgotten and the siblings are going through it as much as what the parents are. So I, that's why I made sure I wrote about the sibling like Jenny's brother in the book as, as, as well. And I had a lady, she got a hold of me from the state. She's found my website. She had gotten my book and read it all the way on the plane, read the thing. And she said, thank you for enlightening me, for engaging me and for an inspiration. She says, I want to do a Jenny now. She says, because if that young girl could go through what she went through and be where she's at now, why can't I break down my barriers, break down my fears, like what you were saying, like with her book and, and, and go after my dreams and goals. Yeah. Um, so Jenny, I have a question for you. What is the, in this, um, pardon my ignorance, because I'm, I'm learning through your mom's story and your story about autism. What is a misconception about autism that you can share um, with the people that are watching today? Yeah. So, um, yeah, um, basically, um, one thing I can say is that people think we're kind of sometimes heartless or emotionless, mm -hmm. which is definitely not true. Um, I think sometimes because we're, we're sensitive in a way, and because we always get a little emotional and passionate, maybe sometimes it can come off that way but it's it's the, it's the total opposite of that and then yeah the things like oh being autistic or dumb or incapable of mm. doing stuff but that is not true we are capable of doing things we just need to be given a chance and opportunities like other people as well so beautiful you you know what ladies it's coming to the bottom of the hour and i think that is the perfect place um, to leave our, our time today. Um, as you saw, I don't monitor comments. If somebody was commenting, um, go back to please. I invite you to go back to my, my page and see if there's any comments. We will make sure that we'll put links to where you can buy Jenny's book and buy Janet's book as well. Uh, follow their business page, um, their page on Facebook and on Instagram. Um, guys, this was a, a special treat for me um, to have these lovely ladies. I encourage you to grab a book, um, sit down, read something new, um, share it off with someone. If you've read a book and it's changed your life, I have to tell you my not my fiction book, ladies, that changed my life, uh, John Irving's A Prayer to Owen Meany um, was uh, a life-changing book. It's a character in there who is thought as an outcast, but how he affects people's lives uh, John Irving is one of my favorite, you know, Canadian authors as well. Mm -hmm. So you're up there, Miss Jenny Story, with uh, John <laughs> Irving in my in my world. Uh -huh. So thank you guys. Um, if thank there's um, any comments, anything, put in it after you watch this video because it stays evergreen. These two lovely ladies will definitely get back to you and make sure you have one of their books um, um, in your hands. So thank you so much. Enjoy your Saturday. I know you've got lots and lots of stuff uh, happening Ooh. in this next week. And we will see you um, in a week on uh, week Tuesday for another edition of the virtual bookstore author series. Thank you so much, everybody. Thanks, Thanks Jeanette. Thank Thanks bye, everybody. Oh, bye.